Today we're going to be looking at a reversible cowl. My channel casualistic and hi to my new subscribers thank you very much for joining me uh, so today we will be looking at da -da 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 -da, uh, this reversible uh, cowl so we see it can be worn two ways you can wear it that way round or you can flick it inside out and you can wear it that way around and as you can see it's like a, a ridge effect on the other side so very pretty um, it did take quite a long time to uh, make, um, obviously it's quite thick so it will be quite uh, warm. Um, so if you're looking for something nice and thick, you can alter the size of this, so you can make it a smaller cow. Um, I've done the size that she recommended, it's come out quite large on me. Um, so if I did it again I would probably shorten the, the sort of starting chain. Um, but other than that I think it's very very pretty. So. I'll just do a little close-up of the lattice work so you can see. So as you can see, there's a repeating pattern there. And then the inside you've got like a ridge effect. Okay, so I've been storing it all in a uh, project bag, which is actually a tote bag, which I bought from Woolly Hugs, uh, the charity I support quite some time ago. I don't think you can get these in this colour, but it's actually purple. Um, so obviously being my favourite colour I love it so I've got three of their bags now they release them every so often on Facebook so if you're interested in getting hold of one you need to follow the uh, Woolly Hugs on Facebook um, so um, I'll show you the pattern first so the pattern is called Snowdrops Reversible Cowl it's by the Mowgli blog by uh, Tamara Kelly so this is her pattern and obviously that's how hers so she used an ivory in sort of an aubergine plummy colour um, which is what made me gravitate towards it in the first place because purple is my favourite colour of course so that's um, that's a free pattern now the hook if I can find it it's done, I'm done with it <laughs> it's in the bag somewhere I don't know where it's gone it sorry about that uh, right so the hook I've used is a 5.5 millimeter if that decides to focus okay 5.5 millimeter hook that's for the entire project now the yarns I've used my cake is falling to pieces that's annoying because it was really tidy a minute ago oh well um, so um, let me just grab the label so both the yarns are both the same make and brand so it is called majestic double knitting now as usual i've gone off um what the designer has recommended um i always use what i've got in my stash rather than buying specially because i cannot afford to do that um as you can see it says mixed fiber there's no color work code doesn't give you any yardage or anything like that um, this is the same both labels on both the grey and the pink are exactly the same so that's all the information I've got so I'm sorry about that but and um, the yarn was donated to me so obviously I know only know what's uh, on the label so for the pink which is very annoyingly suddenly decided to unravel I've obviously caught my finger in it so I'm gonna have to re-cake that which is very annoying uh, <laughs> Um, so for the pink, this is beautiful uh, fuchsia pink. Now um, I've used one full 100 gram ball. They're both 100 gram balls that I've used. Um, this feels more predominantly acrylic. It's got a slight spongy feel to it, um, but I'd say primarily an acrylic, even though it says mixed fiber. Um, I use one full one full 100 gram ball, and then probably. Um, about a quarter of a second ball so the the the, the inside color you do need a lot more yarn off so if you're doing do make this project um, I'll give you the yardage of what she recommends in a second but just bear in mind that you might need two colors for the interior color so that's the first one and then the second color uh, which is the gray I've got this much left over from one 100 gram ball so this is how the ball started off 
and that's what I've got left. So I've still got a fair bit left. Um, this grey, although it's, um, it says mixed fibre, um, it does feel like it's got possibly some wool in it. It's a little bit scratchy. Um, it's definitely not 100% acrylic. I think it might be an acrylic uh, wool mix from the feel of it, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, to be honest. So that's how much I've got left of, of the um, grey. I'll just pop those out of the way. Right, so on the pattern, she recommends... Um, the yarn that she's used, she's used a uh, Lime Brand Collection Superwash Merino, uh, one ball of the colour Ivory, which is 200 yards, which is what I've used as grey, and uh, one ball of Eggplant, uh, which is what I've used as pink, and that has 300 yards. So there is a yardage difference, so you just need to make sure that your um, yarn is over 300 yards if you're wanting to just use one ball of yarn. So that's something that you need to be aware of. Now, um, construction of this. Um, I will say I probably won't ever make one of these again, certainly not in a hurry. I found it a little bit tricky. Um, I did have a flu jab last Saturday and I have been getting some symptoms, unfortunately. Um, and it's affected sort of my concentration. I think there was a little bit of me not quite reading the pattern properly. Um, that's more down to me than the actual designer. So um, it took... A long time to make this because effectively you're making two cows um, so this actually took me on and off uh, a good week where I thought it was perhaps going to take me a couple of days um, so you do need to bear in mind that actually you're effectively making two cows so it will take you longer than an average one love the result I might make it again maybe in a, another year or so but I don't think I'll be doing another one in a hurry certainly if I did I would shorten it I found this um, I've done exactly what she's recommended I actually think it's quite, um, as you can see, it's quite long on me. Um, I am quite a small person, so um, somebody that's larger, you probably wouldn't have such a big of a gap. Um, but there's not really enough that you can twist it and put it over again like you can for an infinity scarf. So, um, But of course I've gone off yarn, so that could have affected um, it as well. So, this is where I had a lot of problems, where the bits join. Um, you've got a join in the middle but that I didn't have a problem with it was the outside bit that I struggled to understand the most um, it was just the um, beginning and end of each row that I, I struggled with now it is a repeating pattern so both the pink and the grey start off with a foundation single crochet or uh, if US terms or double crochet if you're in the UK um, I haven't um, done foundation well I've done foundation single crochet before but only done it once or twice so I did have to look at a tutorial so I will put the link for that tutorial down in the description box should you need it as well um, so one of those things if you don't do it over and over even though you know you know how to do it unless you're doing it all the time it doesn't always stick does it and of course I have memory problems if you're new to the channel I suffer from depression and anxiety and one of my side effects with both my med medication can cause it, but also the actual illnesses themselves can cause uh, brain fog and uh, memory uh, issues, and um, also concentration issues as well, amongst many other symptoms that I won't go into right here and now. Um, but I do have problems with concentration and memory, so sometimes I forget how to do things. So I'm very thankful for YouTube that there are a lot of really great tutorials on uh, on here. Um, so the um, for the grey side, basically you do nine rounds, which um, set up the um, pattern, and then uh, rows uh, rounds ten to seventeen are just repeating rows uh, six to nine, and then you do one more row after that, which uh, finishes it off, which sets up for you joining the two pieces together. Basically, um, there is um, a, a, a small chart there, which actually I did find quite helpful because some of the written instructions I didn't find that terribly clear I love Mowgli's um, patterns I really do but sometimes I find that they're not always written as clearly as I would like you know um, a lot of people think that I'm quite advanced I am I've only been crocheting uh, for three years now um, so I, I'm still a novice in, in a lot of uh, ways um, 
so I do still struggle with some patterns um, so please don't think that I don't just because I've managed to do things sometimes I fudge things to get way around it which has been a little bit of that with this going on um, but I did find the chart even though I can't read charts fully I did find that this that, that it did help me with the start and the ends of the rows so uh, if you like your charts um, this pattern um, you'll definitely like because it has got a chart in it um, so basically I'm not going to go into the full um, pattern for the um, for this lattice because it's um, every, there's so many different rows in it I'd be there I'd, this this could be an hour long if I try to explain it but basically you have um, clusters of chains some are chain three some are chain five um, and then you work in certain rows you work in um, to some of the chain fives with five double crochets that's US terms or trebles if you're in the UK and then a following row you'll see there are double crochet three together or triple crochet three together depending on where you are US or UK um, and predominantly apart from that it's just chains and it is a repeating pattern um, the actual repeats I didn't find a problem with at all pattern was fine for that it was just the beginning and the end I struggled with I think it was partly because I wasn't reading the pattern correctly um, because I was tired I'm suffering from the flu jab brain fog all, all the different factors that go on in my life um, I did find the further up in the pattern I got something kind of clicked and then I was able to work it out then was kind of looking back going I don't understand why I didn't understand it so I do think that was partly my, my mental health that was kicking in there so but I still managed to finish it um, for the inside um, the, this ribbed bit is actually on the wrong side so you actually work with that, that piece facing you so this bit here <laughs> not the grey bit but um, so the bit that's attached to the grey is actually completely flat work so the back is worked um, in uh, in the round um, again it started with a foundation single crochet um, or double crochet for in the UK um, and you work um, basically rows of double crochets US terms trebles if you're in the U UK and then the next row is half double crochets, US terms, half trebles if you're in the UK. Now the pattern tells you, and I'm going to actually tell you this bit. Um, it's basically, um, you do, to start it off you do four rounds, four different rounds. And then from rounds five to twenty-two you just repeat rounds four, three and four, over and over and over again. So it the second part is actually a lot easier to do because once you've worked out what to do it's really really simple now on round uh, three it tells you to half double crochet in each stitch around um, which is fine okay then round four it tells you to double crochet this is all in US terminology double crochet in the third loop of each stitch around now that threw me because I was like well there's only two loops at the top I don't understand that there's no picture to explain it so I had to go onto YouTube and find it and I actually discovered there's um, a, a channel um, the name escapes me right now but I'm going to link it down in the description box it's quite a small channel I think she's only got about eight or nine subscribers but she's done a tutorial for both the grey part and the pink part. Now I'd already done the grey part and I was kind of like, Ugh. if I'd known I could have used that, would have cleared up any confusion with the beginning and the end parts that I was struggling with. So I went on to, the, she's got it, so the grey part is one video and the pink part is a second video. Um, so I went on to the second video and it shows you, so basically what you're doing is you ignore the, your loop one and loop two is obviously where your normal front and back loops are um, from your heart your um, half double crochets to the row beneath then what you do is the um, with the half double crochet you've got that slant haven't you that comes across the stitch that there's that goes I hope that makes sense so if you've got your two prongs and then it kind of looks like that doesn't it so basically what you're doing is this one is where your double crocheting around I hope that makes sense it's very difficult to explain but I am going to 
link the um, video. If it hadn't been for that video, I wouldn't have actually been able to complete this because I really did not understand what this pattern was actually telling me. I'd never heard of that third stitch before. So again, that's where my lack of expertise, although I've you know crocheted a lot of things, that's, that's, that's some, that was something new to, to me. So again, I've learned something through this. So hopefully I've taught you something as well. Um, but basically, once I've I'd sort of understood that the inside was really really easy to follow and what causes these ridges is these loops here are actually the top of your half double crochets from the previous round and then you do obviously the stitch on top and that's what creates the the ridge so it's, it's very clever it's very simple just the pattern wasn't written brilliantly certainly not for me anyway um, and then um, it tells you to put the wrong sides together so the sides that were facing you when you were working to single crochet I tried doing that and it tells you to then flip um, so basically you single crochet both bits together both top and bottom um, but it told you to flip after you've done the first one and mine just would not lay flat so actually what I've done is I've done so I laid it out out how it would be when it was finished so I had the right side facing me on this one um, and the right side facing me on the pink one as well. So like that, because I knew the ridges had to go on the inside. So it's fairly easy to work out. And I single crocheted round and did it like that, um, which gave me, me the edging, even though the pattern said to do the wrong sides together, what she classes as the wrong sides were the sides that were facing you when you were crocheting. Um, she's got this um this ridge here on both the top and the bottom and mine wasn't coming out like that when I was following her instructions so um again I don't know if that's just because I wasn't understanding it or what but um when I single crocheted the top doing it how she said and then it tells you to flip it I just didn't get the ridge it wasn't laying flat so that's what I did differently to what the pattern said but it still came out looking the same so um so that's it um like I say, I don't know if the pattern was, it was me that was primarily the problem, whether it was completely the pattern or a mixture of the two. Um, I found it a little bit tricky. I would certainly say it's not one for beginners. Um, but like I said, there is this really great tutorial that I've discovered on a very, very small channel. So I am going to link her channel down below because I like helping other channels grow anyway. Um, so, and it did help me and I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. So I'm going to link both, both of the tutorial videos down in the description but I think the result despite all the problems has been worth it um, without problems we don't learn so yeah so I'm pleased with it and um, I just wouldn't make it again in a hurry I didn't really some projects you start off and you think oh I'm going to really enjoy this I'm really looking forward to working on it and as soon as I started hitting problems I stopped enjoying it so and I think that's partly why it took me so long to actually make this um, yeah, so I wouldn't do it again in a hurry is the simple answer. Um, I have seen um, online that you can shorten the chains. I think if you shorten them by 10 each time, um, so it's got to be multiples of 10 for the pattern to work, um, you can make shorter versions. So sort of maybe only make that, that high up and you can make them into reversible ear warmers and things like that. So there is some uh, versatility for those of you that are able to adapt patterns. Um, I would recommend it for that. So that's it for the pattern bit. Sorry that's a bit long and complicated but it's the only way I can explain it. Right, I also want to do a shout out for a charity that I've just been told um, about. Um, this will be going off to Willy Hugs. Um, I'll put the links for the website and the Facebook down in the description if you're new to the channel. It's a charity in the UK. So this will be going off for the refugee project to keep a refugee warm. Um, so I'll link that all down in the description so you can find it. Now, um, I just want to say a special thanks to Linny, who is Candy Goff uh, Creations here on YouTube. And I'll put a link to her channel down in the description. Um, she's uh, let me know about um, a charity. It's quite a small charity at the minute. It's called Bobby's Little Angels. Um, basically, the premise of the charity, from what I can read about it, is it's for... Um, people that have um, 
uh, multiple pregnancies, so twins, triplets or, or so on, um, and one of the children dies obviously either during the pregnancy or, or during, during birth. Um, so uh, what they do is they provide um, little boxes, um, sort of sort of like memory box basically, like a lot of um, charities do. Um, and they're asking for things to be to be made and donated to put in the boxes. Um, so the boxes are designed to help both the sibling and uh, the, the parent as well, for anyone that survives the obviously the death of the child. Um, so if I um, they've got a Facebook uh, page um, or group, Facebook group I should say. They've also got websites, not a huge amount on the website because it refers you back to the Facebook page but I will link both down in the description. Um, so I'm just going to show you, um, so there's some of the little things that have been made, there's like little hats and bits and bobs. Um, I think there's some blankets that have been made, um, somebody's made some little teddies to go in the boxes. There's a little hat and a blanket there, um, but they do have other stuff. Um, let's see if I can go into that one. So they've got things like this. So if you're a jewelry maker as well, they've got stuff like that as well. So there's all sorts of things that they need for the boxes. So I thought I'd do them a little shout out. Um, they're based down in Cornwall here in the UK, um, but I will link everything. So um, if you're interested in helping them out, um, obviously do a go across and uh, check them out. Um, thanks for letting me know about that charity because I do like um, supporting charities. Primarily what my channel is about is about um, helping charities and giving back, isn't it? So, so that's it for the sort of all crafty uh, bits and bobs. Um, life update, well I haven't been doing a huge amount. Um, since my last video I did spend a day in Mum's garden. Um, we've got quite a lot done three massive and I do mean enormous piles of rubbish um, like I've said before mum's garden is very big I forgot to take my camera again I'm really bad I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm so forgetful um, but uh, I've managed to chop a lot of things down um, so everything's looking light bright and airy at the top of the garden and so we've still got some stuff to chop back and prune back um, but we've got quite a lot done so um, we've definitely made some progress but there's still a lot of work to be done um, did discover I had muscles that I didn't know existed the day after. Um, still a little bit sore, but a little bit better today. Um, so that's sort of been the main event since I, I last saw you. Um, other than that, it's just been usual boring stuff like we all have, like cooking, cleaning, crocheting. That's not so boring, is it? Um, all that kind of stuff. Um, I have been quite tired. I've not been feeling brilliant because I had the flu jab last weekend. Um, so I've been suffering for that a bit. Um, so my crojo's gone a little bit. I'm just uh, not motivation's not been quite there. I'm starting to get it back. Um, I'm finding that I've got quite a lot of projects that I've started, and I'm struggling to finish things at the minute. Um, trouble is, I get lots of ideas, so I start things, and then yeah, <laughs> I get burnt out. <laughs> um, I'm sure you appreciate. I'm I'm doing two videos a week, so I'm having to make two things every week. Um, and get them finished um, so that's you know it's quite a lot of work for me so sometimes I get a little bit burnt out but I'm getting there I'm, winter's coming so I'll have a little bit more time uh, once the uh, winter's fully here I find it a bit easier to do things uh, for the channel during the winter except on the immediate run up to Christmas then it can be a little bit stressful <laughs> but we're not there yet so um yeah so that's basically it for the life update um, so I, how are you all? I hope you're okay wherever you are in the world. Um, what are you working on? Are you doing stuff for Halloween? Or are you doing stuff for Christmas? Or are you choosing need to do neither? And are you just uh, working on some charity projects? I'd love to know what you're working on um, and how is life going for you? I hope you're all okay wherever you are in the world. Um, yes, yeah, so we are basically in October as of tomorrow I think it's uh, 1st of October tomorrow I think I'm recording this on Saturday the 30th of September anyway so um, next week will be start of the sort of Halloween-y type theme like I've said before um, I don't actually celebrate Halloween at all myself um, it's the polar opposite of, of what I'm about as a person but I do recognize that it's a huge thing in America it's becoming a bigger thing over here 
kids and dressing up don't get me wrong i don't have a problem with that it's it's other things that can go on around it that i don't like so um, i'm going to go for sort of a halloweeny type thing and I, I do sort of say that quite loosely um so i'm going to do things that you can potentially use as decorations that you can make yourself i've got one sort of costume piece that you know would be good for a little, little child um so it's going to be bits and bits and bobs um I still haven't fully decided everything, so it's kind of going to be um, deciding things as I go along. Um, so there will be a few bits like that coming up during October, because I just want to acknowledge that I know that some of you do celebrate it, and this channel is not just about me, it's about you as a person as well, and that's important to me. Um, so yeah, so keep on look out for that. So the next um, video I'll be doing will be sharing a pattern that my friend Lucy has made. Um, so, and that will be a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm not going to say any more than that. I'm going to keep you all in suspense. <laughs> um, so, that is it for today. Um, I hope you're all okay wherever you are in the world. And then, so, until next time, remember to stay well, happy crafting, and until next time, remember to stay true to yourself. Bye.